We have an 11 o'clock deadline. I when they come out, you'll be able to talk to them, fellas. That's all I can tell them. Can you help us in any way? I can't way? help. Excuse me, sir. Lieutenant Colombo. Oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I didn't recognize you. You look different somehow. I've had a haircut. Who's in charge? Sergeant Wilson, sir. Well, Detective Sergeant John J. Wilson. That's him. You know him, Lieutenant? Yes, I've worked with him before. I want everyone assembled in the main room within 30 minutes. When Lieutenant Colombo arrives, he's going to want to talk to all of them. Sir, there's 156 customers down there. The lieutenant is a very thorough man. We won't leave here until he finds the person who did this. Yes, sir. Lieutenant? Lieutenant? Good to see you again, sir. Wilson. Yes, sir. John Jay, Detective Sergeant. How do you do? Excuse me. Watch my hand. It's full of grease. This is my dinner. Yes. Would you like a piece of chicken? No, no, thanks. Uh, is the body in there? Yes, it's a... Uh, that's a new raincoat, isn't it, sir? Uh, it's from my wife. Yeah. Oh, present. For my birthday. Fits beautifully. You think so? Yes, I must say. It's a fine-looking raincoat. Yeah, it seems a little stiff to me. Well, it's new. You'll get used to it. Yeah. To break it in. So what do you got? Jesse T. Jerome, born August 3rd, 1923. Height, 5 feet 8 inches. Weight, 174 pounds. What'd you do, weigh him? No, took it off the driver's license. What was he doing, exercising? Sir? His back is damp, so is his pants. Oh, I'll put that down. You know, sir, it's a great honor to be working with you again. I've gained a lot of experience since our last case, you know. Very good. Santini, you in there? Yes, who is it? I'm sorry to bother you. The um, police want everybody upstairs. Oh, yes, of course, Harry. I'll be right there. One shot through the heart. The napkin was found on top of his shoulder. came from the front. Yes, sir. The napkin was found on top of his shoulders, and this 38 caliber revolver was found next to the body. Uh, I suspect it's the murder weapon, though I've learned you can never jump to conclusions. But you say the time of death was between 9.56 and 10.06. How do you know that? For Harry Blanford. Who is that? Well, he's the maitre d', sort of a junior partner. You see, at 9.56, Jerome called from his office to order some coffee sent up, so he had to have been alive. Ergo, Jerome died within a 10-minute span. Yes, that makes sense. What about the money? The money, sir? There's a lot of money in here. Is any of that missing? No, no, none of it. Uh, according to the cashier, it appears to all be there, which rules out robbery as a motive. The robbery was not a motive. No, sir. Let's assume he knew the person that came in. I've got to take off this coat. I can't think in this coat. Pardon me? The coat. I can't think in the coat. Oh. Sir, uh, see, I think the, the problem is it could have been anybody. I mean, uh, unless we trace the gun and pick up some fingerprints. Lieutenant. Yes? Anybody could have sneaked up the stairs, knocked on the door. When Jerome opened the door, they shot him and went right back downstairs again. That's what's been bothering me. Did he open the door? I don't follow you. 
Jerome was shot in the heart from the front. But the body is not here. The body landed eight or ten feet back. I don't understand that. Uh, suppose Jerome comes from the office and he opens the door. Somebody shoots him. Then the bullet enters from the front, but then the body is here, not there. Suppose Jerome opens the door, somebody he knows. Opens the door, how do you do? Come on in. He follows the person in. Now he gets shot from the front, but the body falls this way, not that way. Now suppose he goes to the door, opens the door, whatever he sees is a threat. He turns. Now he runs. Now he gets shot. The body falls just where we found it, but he's shot from the back. So I don't understand how this happened. How does a man get shot from the front and have the body land here? The door has to be open. The murderer opened the door. Jerome did not open the door. Jerome is in his office. He's anywhere. He hears the door open. Now he comes walking forward to see what happened. The murderer sees him, shoots him from the front, and the body falls just where we found it. That I can understand. Sergeant, excuse me, but some of those people downstairs are getting a little restless. How much longer do we hold them? Oh, uh... Sir, I, I took the liberty of uh, holding some of the patrons quarantining them. The guests? Yes. We don't need them. We... You get their names? Yes, sir. Let them go. If we need them, we'll call them. Yes, sir. We, we don't. I'm sorry, sir. I thought it best to uh, hold them. I thought there might be some questions that you might have in mind. What I was about to say, sir, is I don't think that the door was open. You see, that's a new lock. I can see that. It was only installed last week, and there's only one key. And that was found on Mr. Jerome's person. Now, according to his partner, Jerome locked the door every night while counting the receipts. Have this lock taken down to the lab. Have it checked. Yes, sir. I'm going downstairs. I'm going to look around. Fine. Lieutenant? Yes? Sir? Yes? Lieutenant? Yes? You're your... Oh, uh, sir? Lieutenant? What is it? Your coat, sir. You forgot your coat. Just one more thing.